Morning everyone. I'm Nikki Russell, Managing Director of Waterwise. Waterwise is an independent UK not-for-profit campaigning organisation and our vision is that water is used wisely every day, everywhere. That's the Waterwise team there at our Christmas uh, ice skating at Somerset House, obviously pre-lockdown. So I'm going to talk about water in the context of adapting to a three degree um, temperature rise. So I thought it'd be useful first to talk about how much do we use. Some of the interviews that I've had over the years, media interviews um, with people, they've been super surprised at how much we use. Um, and we did some research with Water UK earlier in the summer that showed that people thought that their whole household used about 20 litres a day. That was about half of Brits thought that. Um, actually, on average per person in England and Wales, we're using about 142 litres a day. If you think how much of that you actually drink, the rest of it um, is getting uh, flushed down pipes or used on gardens. 165 in Scotland, very high, and 145 in Northern Ireland. And in England and Wales, it's rising, although we need to be bringing it down. Um, I'm not sure about Scotland and Northern Ireland, but certainly in England and Wales, it's rising. And it's almost doubled in the last 60 years. Um, and although it's been coming down overall over the last 25 years, it's been slowly rising the last five years or so. And then there's COVID-19 and the heat wave. So with all of the hand washing and public health advice, behaviour around water use changed overnight um, and so did consumption. A peak lockdown, companies were reporting that um, household use was up by up to 30% across the UK, but business use, clearly, obviously, was down by up to 60%. Um, and actually, even now, um, well, it's starting to go back into lockdown now, but um, beginning of September, end of August, when lockdown was paused, business use had come back up, but it still wasn't at pre-COVID levels, some of the companies are reporting. Companies had to pause their big water efficiency and metering programmes, which are part of the way that they drive down consumption. Um, and during COVID lockdown, we had the driest May on record. We had less than half average rainfall. Everybody was at home. Um, demand was through the roof and it was up 70% in some areas. It was certainly the highest ever. And that impact was not just in the areas you traditionally think of as dry, southeast and east of England. It was right across the UK. It was Northern Ireland. It was the northwest of England, southwest of England, Scotland. So that's clearly impacted per capita consumption figures um, this year. What about business use? Because that's about a third of water supplied in England, um, 4,700 million litres a day. 80% um, of business customers, if you think we're corner shop, um, that kind of size business, they have similar use to domestic, about 100 litres a day. But the top 200 customers account for 3.5% of total UK consumption. But we don't know nearly enough about how and where they use it. And water efficiency is improving since the uh, opening of the retail market uh, three years ago, but it's still patchy in terms of both offer from the retailers and take up from, from customers, despite the, um, the clear wins in terms of carbon, energy and cost savings and the resilience needs to reduce water use uh, on the business side as well as the domestic side. So how big is the gap? Um, the National Framework for England, um, published this year, said that between 2025 and 2050, calculated, sorry, that many million extra litres of water per day will be needed in England, almost three and a half million, uh, for public water supply to address future pressures. A few examples, Anglian Water have said, the chief exec said at our conference this year, that they'll run out of water within 10 years if they do nothing. For Thames Water in London, the demand for drinking water outstrips supply already um, some days um, and the gaps widening, we've got the figures there, to hundreds of millions of litres per day, um, even in the next five years and um, certainly by the end of the century, huge amounts, a uh, big gap. Scottish water, I think it's really wet there, but actually they only have access to about 1% of rainwater. And even in Northern Ireland, they almost had a hosepipe ban this year and they did have a hosepipe ban last year. That's what Thames Water calls the crocodile gap. It's the rising demand up to 2080 and the reducing um, supply of water available for use. So that's climate change impacts, but also abstraction restrictions to protect and improve the environment. That's the national framework that I talked about. You can find it on the Environment Agency website, although it's moved into an organisation called RAPID now, which sits under Ofwat. Some really useful statistics in there about um, the calculations of what will be needed in England for public water supply and what will be needed to deliver that um, over the next um, sort of 25, 50 years. 
Must mention leakage here. Um, we don't cover leakage, but I know I'm the only water um, sector person speaking on this panel today. So I thought I would just cover it because around 20% of public water supply is lost as leakage. Um, it's about 3,000 million litres per day in England and Wales. Um, and that's not far off um, the amount of extra litres we're going to need per day by 2050 to maintain water supplies um, with population growth, climate change and environmental needs I mentioned just now. And leakage really affects the public appetite for water efficiency. You can imagine how many people say, why would I bother that if there's leakage all over the news or in my street outside my house? The water sector is working on this. Uh, they're committed to halving leakage in the next 30 years. And um, actually leakage went down by 7% to the lowest, le lowest level since records began. It's fair that I should say that about the sector. They are working on it. Um, and you have to run really fast even to, to keep still on leakage. Some pictures of what leakage looks like to customers. These, um, unfortunately, are both Thames water ones. They were the ones I found. Um, so you can see a huge impact, not only on water supply, but also on public consciousness. So how's it going in terms of tackling this problem, water availability? How are we doing? How are we going to do on a three degree temperature rise, let alone now? Ambition is higher than before. Uh, definitely, right across the board, government, water companies, regulators, customers, uh, but it's not high enough. Domestic consumption is rising and the picture for business isn't clear, as I mentioned before. Green shoots, we need big trees. So what are we doing about it? Good news, mental ambition is high. We've got commitments to cut per capita consumption. Actually, the conversation has sort of moved on now from per capita consumption because it's not just... Um, not all of that is in the water company gift um, and also certainly during COVID we see that there's a much more complex picture than how much we all use in per head. Um, we almost at last have a UK government water efficiency label and a national target in England. The label has been shown to have the massive, mo most um, humongous impact on, um, the biggest impact of any policy option on bringing water consumption down um, and governments are almost there. Um, there's a few other points there, water efficiency is now getting going in Scotland despite the, the rain um, and they're linking it there to net zero because I'll come on to that later but water efficiency does help mitigate climate change because of the energy use involved in water treatment and supply and wastewater um, as well as adapt to it. So we've got new groups, there's loads going on in business, we've got an action plan we're all working on, we've got the new national framework that I talked about in England with five really active regional groups working under that and working with stakeholders right across the piece and we've got some national UK campaigns going on which I'll talk about in a bit. Less encouraging news, so we're not going fast enough, you would expect us to say that as the UK water efficiency campaigning organisation but other organisations have said it too including the National Infrastructure Commission. Water efficiency is still the poor cousin really, it isn't mainstreamed into policy across governments or when, when governments are talking about economic growth, flooding, housing, energy policy, no one's really going, oh yeah, where does water efficiency factor into this? Um, there is an improved regulatory framework but still regulatory penalties for leakage are higher than for on the water efficiency side in England and Wales. Uh, and we don't know what delivery is going to look like in the next five years, not least because of COVID. Um, could government go cold on a water efficiency label? We hope not, but it's not yet in the bag. Um, overall, are we being radical enough, even for the next five, ten years, let alone uh, the next 80 years, which this conference is looking at? So I did some digging, asking how the water sector in the UK is factoring in a three degree rise. Um, in England, it's based on the UK SIP um, scenario, so that's between 2.6 and 4.2 uh, degrees, but a central estimate of 3.2 um, by the 2080s, that's clearly consistent with, with 3 plus by 2100. Um, some, some framework stats there about the national framework. I have put a call out for Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland to find out how they're sectoring in a three degree, how they're factoring in a three degree a three degree rise in their work. Hopefully I'll have some of that info back by the time we have the live panel. Uh, company level approaches are really important because water is very different in very different regions, even in very different communities, small communities. Uh, Wessex water is looking at forecasts based on two to four degrees and Anglian is committed to being uh, fit for four in their recent five point plan. As I mentioned before, demand management helps us mitigate as well as adapt to climate change. Yay! 6% uh, of UK emissions are from how we use water um, in homes and businesses. And uh, a small amount of that is the water company's own processes. The rest of it is how we use it. Um, if we cut a third of household water use, over 25 years, that would be a carbon equivalent of a million cars off the road. 
And what used by businesses in England, we have more stats on businesses in England than uh, we do elsewhere in the UK, equates to the emissions from 73,000 cars a month. And for the customer, including issues like water poverty and fuel poverty, water efficiency cuts energy bills and water bills. You're using less energy to heat water in the home. So what about people? Does behaviour change matter? Can't we just fix the pipes? So you'll see at the bottom I say, well, no, because we won't be able to adapt without behaviour change. It's not just about uh, climate impacts. We've also got increasing demand. We're changing how we use water. I mentioned that it's doubled. Um, we've got population growth, economic growth, sometimes in the wrong places in terms of water supply. Um, and remember, I mentioned water use has doubled in the last 60 years, and we will need to at least halve it again to be sustainable. I mentioned that research about uh, 20 litres a day per household. That's what half of people in Britain think. Actually, it's 142 litres per person. Um, and there are so many different water use patterns and priorities. We're all different. Uh, so for example, some research we carried out last year on Generation Z, again, that's how you say it, showed that they shower more than having baths, but some of them are taking multiple showers each day. So the behaviour change bit is absolutely crucial, and I'll come back to that on my closing challenge for the conference. These are some of the campaigns we've been running as WaterWise, working with the water sector and others who support them. Um, Let your lawn go brown, that's fine. Badge of pride, it will recover when it rains. Water saving, what we have every year. This year in May, it hit 3.5 million people. And um, that was peak COVID, peak heat wave. It was a really powerful campaign. Tips for saving water during COVID. So follow the public health advice on washing your hands. But here are some other things you can do in the house and garden to save water. And a, a three month campaign that we run, a really powerful one aiming to reach 20 million customers over July, August and September. We ran this jointly with Water UK this year. What about the value of water? So this is not just about price. Um, in the UK, we spend an average of just over a pound a day on a household water bill, water bill and that's about the same as third of a takeaway coffee, an expensive one, quarter of a pint of beer in a pub, one and a quarter postage stamps, or <laughs> when my team put this in, a pedicure on half a toenail. Um, and some of that wording down there um, is going to feed into a campaign that we'll be running as WaterWise to raise this value of water in people's minds. Um, and it's really clear in the water sector. And if you think about it, just for all of us as individuals, we don't really recognise the value of water until it's gone. If we had a supply shut off for a day in our house, we would really recognise it. So this is, I'm coming to the end. Um, I was having a think with the team as well about what do we need to do in the water sector to adapt for three degrees plus? How much more radical do we need to be in the next 50, 100 years? And we were trying to be really radical. Um, and some of the, I framed these as questions because even as the campaigning organisation, some of the things we thought of as quite radical, uh, people would be really nervous about. But actually in 80 years, we're gonna have to be super radical. So what I've done here is just phrase it in terms of questions. Um, and we could maybe have a conversation about this on the live panel on the day. So what would we need to ban? What would we need to mandate? How much do we need to cut use by? How should we charge? What should we pay? Should water be a commodity at all? And what about linking it with other utilities like energy use, uh, telecoms, broadband, all of these kinds of things. That picture there is uh, a picture that Lydia and my team took during lockdown. It's of a dried up um, stream in Hertfordshire during one of her daily walks. This is a really real and visible challenge for us now, let alone at the end of the century. Closing challenge to the conference, behaviour change is super important. How do we take people with us on this journey, sharing our ambition before we get into a crisis and helping us to adapt together? Thanks very much and I look forward to seeing you on the day.